Hi YouTube! I want to make a beginner guide for those of you who are fairly new at the game but still know some things and are looking to make more out of the Synthesis League start than what you have before, possibly. So, if you're completely new to Path of Exile, I'd recommend watching my complete beginner guide. It tries to do the like, super basic things. This will be slightly more advanced, but most of it should also be fairly applicable to new players. So, um... Every class doesn't get every gem. Like, or let's start with some example. If you're a witch character, you will not get the gem Onslaught. And uh, Onslaught can be very useful for linking to your active gems. It'll make you go faster, more movement speed, attack speed, cast speed, stuff like that. And um, as an example, so if you're a completely new player, you don't get Scion. Usually, if you're a witch, you could make a Scion character, heal Hillock, and you get the Onslaught support gem. That's very useful. If you don't have that, you can start a Templar character, and then you can actually go all the way up to the Submerged Passage, then you can buy things like War Banner, Onslaught, if you killed Hailrick, um, Onslaught, and you get some like, nice support champs for the start. And, and something that's very common, if you're a Templar, we meal with a Shadow and buy things like uh, Explosive Trap, and you can also check the vendors um, getting an early blue-blue-green, so you could do Added Lightning, Onslaught, and Stormman, for example, can be big, or being able to buy Movement speed boots. Things like that. Very, very nice to do with your mule character. And a few other things that are very big for League Start is Peewee Trade or pathofexile.com slash trade. I'd say pathofexile.com slash trade is better. You need to be logged in. And uh, as an example, I want to say talk a little bit about uh, whoops. And I want to talk a little bit about count and and searches. So... At League Start, something that's very important to say, say you're following a build guide and you know that there's a few cheap uniques or something cheap that you want to buy for the build, then you can set up a whoop. So in this example, you would search for a Quill Rain and then activate a live search. Then whenever a Quill Rain is listed, it'll tell you. Same on PoE Trade, you would do the same here. You search for a Quill Rain, click enter, and then here, click here to perform this live search. And what that'll do is it will come up with a notifier when the item you're searching for is for sale. So normally we do this with like five links, six links, divination cards, certain prophecies, things you need that you think you can get fairly early. Mm. I make the whoop. There was an example of a whoop in action. And then you'll see a notification up here at the top. Now, another feature that's very, very, I actually don't know how to do this one on pathofexcel.com, but I'm sure it's not that hard to figure out. Um, if you go here, you can search for, for example, a jewel, and now I'm going to teach you about and and count searches. So, on hardcore, I would always generally want life on my jewels. You can also do all of this in a count search, and I'll explain that too, but for, for this example, say that I want to find a jewel that at least has life on it, and then say I'm doing, for example, a frostbolt build, right? You can look at the gem, and at the top you can see that it has spell, projectile, and cold. We know that these tags will definitely apply to the spell. So for example, I can get projectile damage. Projectile damage. Um, increased damage. Now this works for anything. Oops. And they'll be like obviously very separate. This is for normal jewels, not abyssal jewels. But abyssal jewels, you don't find them super early anyway. More like after 5 hours. Um, increased damage. Cold damage. Um, spell damage. And there's a lot of things you can add because a lot of things while holding a shield, like so, things like that. And then if you're a build that's using shield charge, you'd want, for example, attack speed as well to make your shield charge go faster. Giving so you as an example, you can see here that we're searching for multiple things. And if you just search for that in a normal search, it wouldn't display anything. But then what we would do here is we would put two here and that'll search for a three stat jewel. Uh, which should be plenty of on standard. You can use this for a lot of things. So here you see like we're getting like 10 to 15 C jewels. If we search for a 4 stat one it's going to be pretty expensive. Um, and you can use this to find nice jewels. If you remove the life, 3 stat jewels should be really really cheap. Like 5 C each for the triple, triple damage or double damage attack speed. Um, this is also sort of useful for, let's say you're searching for, actually let's, let's search for a ring. 
So being specific in the resists that you're searching for and stuff is pretty bad a lot of the time. So a very useful one is to search for pseudo retlin. Plus percentage, percentage, total elemental resistances. So hashtag, sorry. So this one, what this will do now is search for any ring with 120 res or more. And then you can then click on the actual stat on PUE.train and it'll start listing. So the highest that exists is 176. Obviously this will look very different in a league and not on Perma Standard. Um, so when you're not searching for specific like 36 cold, 35 lightning, you're getting a lot more results. So this can be really, really good. You can also search for max buyout, five chaos. And you can get some really good bargains that way on temp leagues. Obviously it would change your searches something. Um, let's see. So talking about investment and PoE.trade, early on exalts will be fairly cheap. I'm not 100% sure what they are on softcore, but on hardcore exalts are between 8 to 20c for the first 4 or 5 hours. And they do rise fairly quickly. So investing into early exalts can be really, really good if you're lucky and you manage to make a lot of currency early or you're one of the first people to maps. Um, maps early on will sell for like 2 to 5c for a lot of maps. If you're really one of the first people, like first person to tier 8 map and you get lucky with a card or for a strongbox or something, you can, um, you can get a lot of money early on to invest into exalts. And somebody's saying that um, software results are on 30 to 40 C or they on. So you can invest early on there. Playing with friends or other people can be very beneficial at Star League to do things like sharing maps. If you don't have any friends that play Path of Excel and you don't know many people that play, you can use, for example, my Discord to um, find people to play with there. It's open to everybody. You can find that by going to my Twitch chat and just writing a submission my Discord. Um, definitely would recommend that. And uh, once you get to Blood Aqueduct, you can farm a divination card called Humility, which you farm nine of it and you get a Tabula Rasa. Um, I would recommend doing that for most people at a league start, because getting a 6 sync that early, like, your survival is going to be fine anyway, and just the amount of damage you're getting from it will help your survival so much. Um, once you've gotten your Tabula, you just continue doing Act 9, 10 and get into maps. Now, I'm making another guide for maps, which is uh, gonna go on YouTube fairly shortly as well. It's basically what maps I'm shaping, some tips into maps, uh, like early mapping tips basically. So that should be on YouTube fairly early. Uh, I've got some sextant videos as well. And uh, speaking of other videos, uh, one I have is like an old league catch-up mechanic. I don't currently have one for Betrayal, I do want to make one, but I talk about previous leagues such as Bestiary, Delve, Incursion, stuff like that. So if you haven't played those leagues, I would recommend watching those and I'll link those in the description down below. And I also have a beginner video, which is fairly extensive. Uh, it's like an, a one hour video, which is aimed at people who have just started playing the game. My parents said they understood most of it, so it should be fairly um, easy to understand. Um, and early on as well, uh, like super early, something you want to try to get is resists. Wearing like two two stone rings early on, like before you enter series, it's very nice. And uh, ideally, I try to be like 50 to 70% by the time I'm in Act 4. Act 5, I definitely want to be resist capped. Now, with the new crafting system, it's very easy to craft resists on your pieces of gear with just one transmute. One transmute for the cheapest one, one elk for the more expensive one. So definitely recommend doing that. Remember they do lose 30 something resist in Act 5 and again in Act 10 once you kill Katala. Um, another big tip as well is instant life flasks. So normally, I don't know if I have any examples here. So seething life flasks, you normally, I try to get one around level 18 to 24. Um, this helps do your survival a lot, especially if you're in hardcore. And then again at 42, and finally at 60. So ideally like three tiers where you want life flask to be like fairly up to date. Um, it boosts your survival so much more than having an overtime life flask. Generally you're not going to go like, oh no, I am dying in around three seconds. So it's mostly going to be things that kill you quickly. Vendors can sell these, but generally reduce transmutes and um, 
alterations. Other flasks as well that are pretty important. Early on, once you've done this side quest at the start of Act 7 in Broken Bridge, you pick up some necklace, then you can get a granite flask. I usually recommend getting a granite because it makes such a big difference to not being one shot early on. Granite usually tapers off once you've started going into maps because it doesn't do much against large hits and one shots and in maps like tier 2 to 4 maps and above you want to consider start using a basalt flask. Um, getting things like freeze immunity, curse immunity, bleed immunity is very nice on your overtime flasks. And uh, jade flask as well. I'd argue jade flask as long as you have enough life already not to get one shot I'd say jade is better than granite. Granite's especially nice if you're speed running and you are already in the one shot range. Generally nothing except spells will one shot you if you're using a granite. Um, a lot of players complain about the game being pretty slow when you're new. Now early on, I think this is level 8 requirement to roll it, you can get adrenaline. So you see the suffix here, that's the one that gives 30% increased movement speed. That means instead of just giving 40, a quicksilver will give you 70 or up to 70% movement speed. And then later on, once you're in maps, you can do Alchemist of Adrenaline, then it's like 80 or 90% movement speed, maybe 100. So it's, it's a large difference over like the normal 40. Um, I wouldn't use Alchemist of Adrenaline early on, like before Act 8 or 9, just because there's not enough monsters to keep it up by like killing enough. Um, I have a big warning to everybody who hasn't been staying up to date with patch notes in the development manifesto and you're new. There's been a big change to the way controlled destruction works, and in, in this case specifically, sort of with Elemental Overload. Um, so if we look here at controlled destruction, what it does is it reduces your crit chance by 100%. And although that can be slightly confusing when you're new, basically what it does is uh, it reduces your crit by the base crit. So if you have five base crit, this would reduce it by five. So if you have 15 crit, on a 5 base crit spell, and you use control, then you would have 10. You won't have 0. It is not similar to Resolute Technique. You can still crit while using Control Destruction. However, normally at the moment, we currently use Control Destruction on non-crit builds, because right now, in Betrayal, we can't go below 5% crit. Um, 5% is like the lowest crit chance. I don't remember where it says crit here. Uh, lowest crit chance you can get. So here you see 5% and if I put control destruction in, it's still 5%. In, uh, in synthesis in 3.6 this is changing. So if you did this in synthesis this would be removed. It would be 0%. And if you're a non-crit build anyway this usually doesn't matter. But a lot of builds use elemental overload for leveling. So that would mean, in this case, if you still want to use Controlled, you need a separate gem to trigger your Elemental Overload. For example, Orb of Storms, Stormbrand are like the most popular uh, for this. Um, if you have 0% crit and using Elemental Overload, this is 2 skill points you will be wasting. And this is going to take a lot of people by surprise because it's very new. Um, so it will just you'll never crit with 0%. You'll never get Elemental Overload. So instead of control destruction, if you want to proc it, say you're, as an example, playing Storm Run. If you want to proc it just by using Storm Run, consider using the new Innervate, it's been buffed a little bit, or Lightning Penetration instead. But don't use controlled and hope for Elemental Overload procs. And Elemental Overload is a massive damage buff. So control destruction is still good and we'll still probably be using it in crit builds. But only if we're already at very high. On a positive note, crit can now also go to 100% instead of 95. So it's not just straight up a nerf, it's just a change. It's just something to be wary of. I wanted to make that a warning in the video. Um, more like generic tips for starting in links and stuff, I'll show another one here, is vendor recipes. So, and again, a lot of you have probably seen this while paying attention to like the, the races. But if you look here, say I would buy, let's imagine this is blue, blue, green, and I want it to be blue. You need it to be blue, and then you get an alteration. And now we're going to change it. So you buy an iron ring, and let's say an explosive drop, because that's a green gem. You turn that into a topaz. Now what you do is you sell this with a topaz, the blue one, and an orb of alteration. That's now plus one socketed lightning gems. This is very, very strong early on, because any spell gem or a few other things like elemental hit scales very high with the level 
So this can be like a 30% multiplier for your damage. So as you can see, this is a very, very big boost to your damage. Um, to make it, like, obviously that's uh, Topaz for Lightning, Sapphire for Cold, and Ruby for Fire. To make a Chaos one, you need to use a Chaos Gem. Uh, and you can see all the recipes too by googling PoE recipes. And then the first thing is the PoE vendor recipe system. So you can look through it all here and search for example for Chaos Damage. What? Chaos? Chaos Gems? Uh, so here it's like any Chaos Gem and a Magic Wand. So all the recipes are listed here. Worth looking into. Another recipe that's worth looking into is the Rustic one. So I'll show you this. So say you're playing a melee or a bow character and you want to get some fist damage at the start of the league. Say you want to play and like bleed flicker strike or something like that, right? So actually that, that one didn't matter. The, don't bother alking the weapon. That can be white, I'm pretty sure. So what you do is uh, you can either alk or transmute on a Rustic. I'll show you both examples. And then you need a Blacksmith Whetstone. So if you see here now, with the Rare Belt, it goes up to 64 and with the blue belt it goes up to 49 so very very strong for melee ranged characters early on so again rare will be better and then yeah you can that can be very nice so as soon as you find a new base type then uh, you can like get a higher one see i made like um loot filters are very important I would usually recommend Never Sinks, and there are a couple of other loot filters. I have like my own variant of Never Sinks that I use, and obviously it's better to make your own one or a variant of one. Um, what an auto filter does is it like shows different colors and it alerts based on what item drops. So definitely make sure you have a, a Never Sink is very good as a base base one. Um, for finding builds, a lot of streamers will put out like what they think is the best. Generally, I haven't seen very many streamers recommending bad builds. There is also the Path of Exile build forums. The problem with the Path of Exile build forums, and there are good builds on the Path of Exile build forums, but there is so many very bad builds on there, and when you are new, it's hard to find that. A lot of people will lie on their builds and take things in Path of Building as that thing, to show that it has more damage than it actually does. One example being builds that maybe do a 5% shock, people will say it's doing a 50% shock. So streamers is generally a pretty like safe, safe place to get uh, decent builds. I do very beginner friendly ones where I show step by step on the skill tree. So they'll all be up on YouTube um, Thursday or Friday of the league start. Um, also, if you're following a build guide, don't be afraid to say the build guide doesn't say anything about like diamond skin, sentinel, these resist nodes. Like it can be nice to use these to get resist capped. And um, maybe there's like a damage node. If you're feeling a little bit low on damage, you can respec out of that later and follow your guide. Um, leveling gems can be very important. If you're spying a spell build, like for example, say I was playing lightning tendrils, you can buy six lightning tendril gems, level them in your offhand. And the benefit of that is that once they are, let's say this was a level 20 gem, then I would want to, uh, yeah, see this one went plus one. So if you do, if you vol a level 20 gem, it can hit level 21, which is a very big damage increase. So level six gems, you can also sell these gems for a lot. Um, very, very important. Two or three days into the league, try to buy a level 20 gem. If you're, if you're one person, if you're a person that doesn't play a lot and you're already only level 17, like a few levels in your spell level. Massive. Uh, leveling things like enlightens and powers and enhances too can be very expensive and great money. Very good money. Um, for buying gems, especially if you're SSF, like that your character can't do, you can do the library in Act 3 to access more gems. And once you get Act 6, if you do the Lily quest, you can buy any gem once you've done that. Uh, Ball side areas are very, very worth exploring. They've changed them where they drop a lot of items that are evolved. So a side benefit of that is that they have a big chance to be six linked. I'd say one in every 10. One in every 15 Val side areas will have a 6 thing. Obviously it's going to be corrupted and that'll cost Val orbs to change the color on. 
Um, but that can be a very big benefit if you actually get an armor early on. I've had that in a few leagues so far, and a lot of builds are pretty flexible on what support gems they can use, so even if it's not necessarily your optimal colors, it's better than a four-link. So that also bypasses level restrictions, I'm fairly sure. And um, at worst case scenario, you get a Divine Orb. These are also nice to sell early on. Uh, Chaos Recipe can be fairly good early on. It's basically selling a rare, I think it's 55 or 65 item level for a Chaos Recipe. I can't remember exactly the item level, but what it entails is, say for example, a claw, a shield, two rings, one amulet, head, gloves, boots, chest, belt, at item level 65 to 74, and that will give you a chaos. If you sell them unidentified, they give you two chaos. Now, I usually don't do this myself, but I usually always know what things are worth and what's worth selling. It can be very, very beneficial when you're a new player and you already struggle understanding what things are worth. Prophecies as well, I normally even in races unlock Navali as soon as I can and I spam prophecies once I hit around level 40? I think 40, 30 to 40. And I just use all my silver coins. I'd say one in every two, every every other league I get a five link prophecy at league start. This can be very, very beneficial if you're already struggling to get a five link, especially if you're using a unique chest or something. Um. And then you can get some nice ones. Uh, Prophecy is also a video. I have a full video on explaining what all the good ones are. And you can get like things that are worth quite a bit or it's it's definitely worth doing. Uh, a, an example of an early one, Combs Way. I think the optimal level to get a Combs Way card, I think it's called King's Path for the Prophecy. That's like level 30, 32. And then it's like a fairly good chance to get it. Um, there's, uh, there's uh, prophecies for tabula, lots of good ones. Those are sort of like the main things I wanted to cover in the video. Hopefully we'll edit out all the bloopers. And if you have any questions, I will be putting out a lot of videos over the coming days for the start. So have any questions, drop by twitch.tv slash Thanks for watching. Try to die less than I do.